two, one. More the medicines, more the diseases, more the laws, more the quarrels, more the weapons, more the wars. Second, a bitch may have a gallon of milk in its breast for whose children can it be useful? Third, reading books of plenty and mind becoming sick. Four, we should not ripen the fruits by force, for it is not natural. Five, world is full of maya. I am helpless. Who cares for my anguished cry? They act as if they are right. Alas, it is not so. Sixth, the brave are missing. Seven, while performing duties, always think that you should be living for a long time, and while sitting in meditation, think that it is your lost meditation. Eight, stand you want to, then stand erect for three hours. Sit down you want to, then sit erect for three hours. When you are able to fix your gaze unblinking for three hours in Japan, then you will be able to observe that which is significant. Nine, the peace is my God. Attend, your head on your legs, your hand on your head. Eleven, talk you should never about God and neglect you should not your duties. Always be conscious about your duties. Twelve, do not be lured into the sleepy samadhi. Thirteen, do not venerate the past. Fourteen, realize, that is, the Self, the Brahman, and the Daiva. Five, fifteen, striving is the merit of the sadhakas. Sixteen, so long as you have self-confidence, you need have no fear. Seventeen, why strong woes to the sadhaka? Eighteen, worry is limitless. Nineteen, yell you should not and pardon you should not seek. Twenty, physical to the physical, subtle to the subtle. Twenty-one, do not wear okra robes, nor respect those who wear and roam about for nothing. Twenty-two, sit, do, and see. Twenty-three, noble human life is not given for mean enjoyment. Twenty-four, idle charter destroys the home. Twenty-fifth, friendship with the mean Damages the reputation. Twenty-six. Human mind is a brake broken bicycle running downwards in the deep slope. Twenty-seven. Reading is better than reading. Twenty-eight. Oh no, human life is not like the bird flying. Twenty-nine. Do not sideline the bad and the evil persons. Try to wean them from the wrong path and by leading them through the right path. Thirty. Why talk of liberation? Why talk only of liberation? Thirty-one. Even a nanosecond loss of attention can keep one away from Brahmatva. Thirty-two. I am eternally grateful to the righteous persons. 33. Since the family responsibilities are heavy, one needs peace. 34. Let them keep the level of their own understanding. I shun it. You keep it so long as you wish to keep. You will shy it away when you no longer feed it or need it. 35. Tall tree and a short reach. 36. 
to those who aspire to learn from me, I am ready to show them the philosophy and its practice. These are what I have realized for the welfare of mankind, and the same I am offering them openly. This was the tradition of the ancients too. That's it. Do not be trapped into Maya. This is my personal advice to you. Thirty-eight. Hey, Pet, the world is not giving credence to my words. What can I do? When I intend to show the right path to my followers, they, under the influence of Maya, strike a deal with undesirable persons. Alas, what can I do? How much I wish my devotees a happy journey of life, but I don't get a chance to do it. One can only imagine my anguish. It is like not getting a place and time even to express my concern. Thirty-nine. What an att- attachment is theirs? Did we summon them to listen to their blabber? Having taken birth, they ought to realize if there is something to be realized. Otherwise, they should quit. Who needs their worn out click? See the fate of dharma. Party. This world is surely in Maya, and I cannot help. But who cares for my wailing? They only believe in what they think is right and live, but surely it is not so. What do you want? Do not be enamored of sweet talks. Live always with dharma and karma, that is, righteousness and duties. When life loses its track of right living at young age, the future is doomed. Think that always move forward in peace. Yes, the peace. Forty-two. Your actions are always accounted for. Forty-three. Lost anything somewhere? Better search at that place only. Forty-four. What life offers you, good or bad, it is wise to leave them out. How can you hope to escape from the consequences of your own actions? Use your intelligence and common sense in steering clear of tiring situations. Know the reasons for the malady and find the solutions. That way you can ward off your crisis. 45. With this, my final teaching. Now, I am giving you two rare quotes. Yogi Achyuta rarely revealed anything about his life and mission openly. In all his lifetime, he must have talked so much as to recall in one 400-page notebook. That's all. On a few occasions, he was assertive and emphatic about what he has come to accomplish. Two such quotes are remembered here. The first one reveals that his mission is the establishment of dharma. He analyzes his method of its accomplishment. And the second quote relates yoga with Veda, and they both hold the secret of yogihood. Enough for the inquisitive mind to assess who Yogi Achyuta would really be. God speak for you all to try your guess as to who he could be. The quote number one. Unlike others, I have not come to do something in a hurry. Nor have I come for a minor mission. What I have brought down is Puratana Adi Dharma, the very ancient divine principle that sustains cosmos and everything in it. 
I know how it should be established, its origin, its nature, and its mode of descent should be respected. I shall follow this rule. I shall assign everything to its proper place. Until then, be in peace with eyes open and with a rational disposition. The establishment of dharma is never accomplished with crudity. It demands a peaceful, ethical, intelligent and cultured approach. The divine person himself has acted thus through his incarnations. That is, the reference here is to Sri Krishna. How can I not follow this method? It is possible. The quote number two. Yoga is part of Veda, but Veda is realized through yoga only. He who thus realizes Veda through yoga remains perpetually in yoga and Veda is the yogi. The mission of Yogi Achyuta. His mission can be summarized under two heads. One, Tattvastapana and two, Dharmastapana. Tattvastapana means the establishment of right philosophy through its practice of Yoga Vidya. Dharmastapana means the establishment of Dharma, the concept of Dharma defies definition. The explanation is that it is a divine sanctioned, righteous and natural law of justice, morally right. It is taken as a categorical imperative. The cosmos is sustained by it. Humanity is bound to live in it. Defying dharma is morally unsustainable. Sri Krishna in Bhagavad Gita declares that when the practicing level of dharma goes down and adharma increases to suffocating level, he manifests himself to re-establish the dharma's pre-eminent position. Now, Yogi Achyuta's family, the Holy Trinity for us. Sri Yogi Achyuta is the founder and the divine driving force to the spiritual movement that Sri Achyutasrama is identified himself with. The movement yielded the institution called Rishimukasrama and later Sri Achyutasrama that subsumed the earlier, that is the former. For the emergence of Rishimukasrama, Two persons acted as the midwives and they are Swami Vijayendra and Swami Jayatirtha. Sri Yogi Achyuta and these two formed our Holy Trinity. Look at Swami Vijayendra. Swami Vijayendra is the first disciple of Sri Yogi Achyuta. He was initiated by the Lord on 16th October 1949. He was soon elevated to Guruhood and started giving Upadesha to the seekers from 1952 onwards. Swami Vijayendra is the chosen one since Lord came down to Karnataka in Saktafim. He was a great teacher, a great orator and a loving individual with a charisma of his own. He had excellent human qualities, very impressive with his intellectual brilliance. He has two daughters. He was born on 15th July 1920 and expired on 24th June 1983. Swami Jaitirtha. Swami Jaitirtha was a teacher by profession, a tapasvi by inclination, and a jnani by his own efforts. He was a brilliant thinker, a philosopher, and author of most of our asramas publications. He was much sought after by disciples for his sane advice 
and personal guidance. He led a pure life of contemplation and solitude. He was most honest and steadfast to the principles he believed in. He was initiated by Lord on 19th October 1950. He was also made the general president of Rishamukha Asrama in 1950. He was born on 13th May 1922 and expired on 30th June 1988. We are adding one more person, very dear man, a highly respected Sri Lakshman Swami. Sri K. Lakshman Rao, though quite a junior to the two Swamiji cited just now, has acquired a status of his own and was very popular and a guru. He was always at the beck and call of the sadhakas and guided them to their satisfaction. Always active and always smiling, his dedication to the cause of ashrama was 100%. But unfortunately, his end came so suddenly that a shock one and all were all missing him. He was born on 4th September 1930, got Upadesha from Swami Vijayendra in 1956 and expired on 30th December 2001. Sri Yogi Achyuta and His Vision of Life Great men rarely write autobiography. Why? In fact, they rarely write anything at all. Few thought originates in Atman, and such thoughts acquire universal value for all time to come. Atman is Nirindriya, meaning it is not an organ, and it lies beyond and above the mind and thought. Thoughts generated at the level of mind and intellect are just passe. Sri Krishna, Buddha, Jesus Christ, represent the first category. Literature, be it from any country, constitute the second category. Yogi Archuta, being a yogi and divine, in the mode of Sri Krishna, rarely used to talk. His life and activities remained inaccessible even to his close disciples. Like all the great souls, he remained virtually unknown to the outside world. All great men live in dharma and teach philosophy that contains eternal principles of lasting value. They do not glorify themselves, since individuals, however great they may be, simply perish, but his philosophy survives. We have thus a situation in India where the authors of the source books of Indian philosophy are practically unknown. Who wrote the Upanishads? Who authored Rig Veda? We do not know. The wise of the ancient times never craved for a name or fame for themselves. They had very correctly understood philosophy that philosophical thoughts as revealed by the Maharshis should be everlasting in comparison with the Maharshis themselves who depart from the scene sooner or later. Yogi Achyuta thus lived this ideal and remained practically unknown outside his small group of disciples. For us, the disciples, he ever remained a mystery, and much of life and works are still, by and large, couched in enigma. He talked less, but his silence was indeed eloquent. Even his smile, he looked and the talks, etc. were very, very profound. All visitors looked at him with awe and wonder. He called himself a yogi, but we found God in him. A few minutes spent with this man made us feel blessed and enlightened. He blessed up with Upadesha and set before us the lofty and benevolent scheme of life based on yogic dharma. Though his words appear very simple, in reality they were not that simple. There was indeed meaning mostly understood 
अनअंडरस्टैंडेबल एट दैट टाइम हर एट दैट मोमेंट वो सो ही इज टू से दैट वेन वन रियलाइज हिज सोल ही देन बिकम्स वाइज एंड एनलाइटन बिफोर सेल्फ रियलाइजेशन ऑल आर सिनर्स आफ्टर देन वी वॉल्ट टू डिविनिटी He said, "Yoga and Veda means the same. Both lead to self-realization. Yoga Vidya and Veda Vidya are almost interchangeable. Since much of this sadhana and the principles of Tattva or philosophy is explained elsewhere, some of his profound utterings need explanation, and they are put this way: Enigma proposition, enigmatic proposition number one. For the disease called hunger." Put these its drug therapy. Please look at the way the statement is framed. One is forced to brood over it. Much of large tattva is contained here. Hunger is a self need of the organism, self felt need of the organism. The organism of the body, in the course of their day to day functioning, deplete their energy and feel the need to replenish the same immediately. The organs need. Only that factor they have lost during their functioning. No other substance will compensate the lost energy. This hungry and food doctrine is what the physician takes into account when he diagnoses the disease and suggests a cure. This doctrine applies to mind too. Mind gets exhausted from fatigue and boredom. It needs to be refreshed. Thus understood. There may be different types of hunger and different types of therapy. To cite another example, for the disease of insomnia, sleep is a therapy. Drug therapy should not be taken to mean that there are drugs available for any type of deficiency. Loss of sleep, for example, and sufficient sleep later is one thing, but there are better and competent alternatives too. Yoga, to give you an instance, is a better alternative so that to that of refreshment to the mind. Prana or vital energy too needs asana as food for his hunger. Since it is the force that sustains the body and its organs, its food needs are to be answered without delay. It is the yoga in sadhana, so to say, that put the food. And sarsit prana. The agency of vayu is vital in the mechanism of production of asana. This is called elaborately as prana pana gata gati. Here prana means the internal air, apana means the external air, and gata gati means friction, up and down movement of two airs blended together. This gata gati. Both the sound and asana, and asana meets the hunger need. Enigmatic proposition number two: Vayu jivatama and asana gata hap prana. The term vayu is extensively used in Vedic samhitas and Upanishads. At the lowest level, the terms connote the atmospheric air. At the higher level, it means internal native air that all are born with. This sometimes is called apana vayu, indicating vayu is distant from prana. Okay, there is yet another vayu at the highest level in the brain, which is called mukhya vayu or mula vayu, the most important and the original vayu. This vayu is encased in the brain region, and it is what prana has created for its service at the headquarters. That once again is the brain. Vayu, though, is created in the vibratory act of pranam. It is strangely is instrumental in the supply of asana to the pranam. Hence the equation, which please note in your mind: without vayu there is no asana, and its supply to pranam. Without asana there cannot be pranam surviving longer. Without prana, there is no scope for atman to be in the body. Without yoga vidya, asana prate, that is production of asana, is not possible. Thus, 
యోగ విద్య అండ్ ఇట్స్ రెగ్యులర్ ప్రాక్టీస్ బికమ్స్ ది కీ ఫర్ లివింగ్ నాచురలీ అండ్ దెన్ ఫర్ రియలైజింగ్ అవర్ సెల్ఫ్ ఫర్ అటైన్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ మోక్ష ఇంటర్ప్రిటెడ్ దిస్ వే వాయు ఈస్ టేకన్ టు మీన్ దట్ విచ్ గివ్స్ వెల్ఫేర్ టు ది ఆర్గనిజం కాల్డ్ జీవా అండ్ ప్రాణన్ ఈజ్ అసనా డిపెండెంట్ ఎనిగ్నాటిక్ ప్రాపోజిషన్ నంబర్ త్రీ ఆత్మా సర్వోత్తమ దిస్ ఈజ్ ఎ స్ట్రేన్ స్టేట్మెంట్ ఇన్ ఎన్ ఇండివిజువల్ కాల్ జీవి ఆత్మన్ ది సోల్ ఈ సుప్రీం ప్రాణన్ సస్టైన్స్ ది బాడీ వాయు సప్లైస్ అసన మనస్ యాక్స్ ఎస్ ఇచ్చాశక్తి అట్ ఇట్స్ స్పీక్ లెవెల్ దట్ ఈజ్ ఇట్ ఈస్ దట్ విచ్ థింగ్స్ విల్స్ అండ్ ఫీల్స్ స్ట్రాంగ్లీ ఆల్ ఆఫ్ దెమ్ దట్ ఈస్ వాయు ప్రాణన్ అండ్ మనస్ ఎక్ట్ ఒబిడియంట్లీ ఫర్ దర్ మాస్టర్ ఆత్మన్ వెల్ ది ఫార్మర్ త్రీ ఆర్ బిజీ విత్ ది పర్ఫార్మెన్స్ ఆఫ్ స్థూల కర్మ మీనింగ్ ఫిజికల్ ఆర్ గ్రాస్ యాక్టివిటీస్ ఆత్మన్ డస్ ది సూక్ష్మ కర్మ ది సటిల్ యాక్టివిటీస్ ఫర్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ తపస్ ఈజ్ ఎ సటిల్ యాక్టివిటీ గెటింగ్ ఇన్ టు సమాధి ఈజ్ ఎ సటిల్ యాక్టివిటీ దైవోపాసన మీనింగ్ ప్రొఫిషియేటింగ్ దైవా ది డివినిటీ ఈజ్ ఎ సటిల్ యాక్టివిటీ ఐ వుడ్ లైక్ టు డ్రా యువర్ క్యూరియాసిటీ టు యువర్ వర్ల్డ్ దట్ ఈస్ గెయినింగ్ అండ్ పబ్లిసిటీ దట్ వన్ వర్ల్డ్ ఈజ్ ఎగ్నా వాట్ ఇన్ ఉపనిషత్ ఈజ్ మెన్షన్ ఈజ్ దట్ Yagna which meant tapas and not something that people are enamored of it today. Sri Krishna has clearly declared Yagna naam japa yagnos me meaning among the yagnas I am japa yagna. Be careful. Japa the term is specifically used by Yogi Achyuta and Sri Krishna the same way. In the yogic parallels grass and subtle activity refer specifically to the agna karma atman is the self my self waiting for me to realize it to realize atman means that i shall become atman myself there being no dividing space in between which means that now there is a dividing space between me and my atman how this happens and why this happens is an enigma how me and mine becomes one is another enigma we get at it we experience it we become that all by the blessing of yoga vidya i indeed beseech you why die without becoming one with atman it is that strange which is referred to as god within and alas it should not mean the dying me surely where one to die and how pray you mean to say that god is within you god within a man ready just to die all such talk is utter nonsense enigmatic proposition number 4 aakarastha lingat linga in philosophy means the soul it is generally believed that the soul cannot be seen as one can see an object it is always a matter of surmise that soul has no shape but our lord yogi achyuta differs here he gives a shape to it we should mean that it surely must exist to have any shape at all anything that exists in us must be taken care of properly but what is one's experience in atma sakshatkara can one see atman generally such yogic experience is not revealed to anybody that to publicly since sri achyut ashrama is coming out into open and publicly demonstrating brahma vidya in action alive let me reveal here that atman shows itself to us in a very dramatic way it has shape it is shapeless Yet it shows itself means confusion, one may think. Let me ask you a question. When one lights a lamp consisting of a mud cup plus oil plus a wick and one lights it with a matchstick, how, tell me, what is it that you see here? A burning light, you say. Okay. 
Now, look at the shape. Is it constant and unalterable? Why? No. One can dim it and the shape shrinks and you brighten it and it expands and give more light. Then you blow out, it simply disappears. This way, my dear observers, so it can be explained. One more example can also be given. You know thunder and lightning. Have you ever observed such a phenomenon? I'm sorry for you if you have not observed one. Otherwise, try to recall it. Lightning is a flash of very bright light in the sky caused by electricity. It occurs very fast or very sudden. A flash is of un unimaginably low during taking lesser time than the wink of eyes. Well, so appears as a flash, so sudden, so suddenly disappearing. That is Atman for you. Got it right? No worry if you cannot catch it. Enigmatic proposition number five, know thyself. Self simply means what soul is. We saw how it surely exists in us. There are many things that exist in our body. Why we are forced or compelled to know only the soul? Why? Because the soul is me. I am not my body or any one of the organs, but I am that, really that, about which, very strangely, I myself is in ignorance. This is truly enigmatic, me not knowing my real me. This enigma need not detain as long, for it is truly real, truly existing, and surely existing within me. And it truly is the master of me. Confused? Sorry, please bear with me. There are three ultimates in the body. They are the pranam, the manas, and the atman. Since manas is a lower functioning state of atman, atman is called ichha shakti and pranam is kriya shakti. One is a planner, other the doer. In the beginning, that is at the time of conception, all the three were in perfect unity and in union. Manas remains unmanifested and as such only two are in proximity with each other. That is the state of yoga for you. Then Vyoga starts. They both get separated. Pranam is charged to build the empire, that is man and his equipment. While Atman retires to his chamber, just watching the drama of life being enacted by the Pranam. Whereas Atman remaining stationary at one point, that it can be here, there and everywhere, and under yogic impetus, it can acquire any shape, smallest or biggest, and also exhibit fantastic powers. It is this Atman that is to be known through the agencies of Pranam and Manas, together with Pranam, ascending to merge with Atman. The yoga ends with yoga, that is, knowing one's own self. Enigmatic proposition number six, attain moksha by Triveni Sangama. Triveni means a triad, and pranam plus manas plus atman are the triad. When the three merged in a particular way, lot of changes occur in us. This merger ever happens only through the practice of Yoga Vidya and the doing of tapas for an extended time. By the time body becomes pure, having purged of all impurities, body will acquire the originally meant shape and function, or rather beginning to function in a commendable way. All the limitations which were crippling and chaining us down begin to disappear. It is like going back to nature. That earns one the true liberation. By chance, my dear, Never make the mistake of presuming that moksha means the end of human existence on the one hand and merger with God on the other. 
that is never never so truly never the case have you not heard of sri krishna explaining the concept of jivan mukta it simply means liberation still living liberation while living it is bad philosophy to state that one gets annihilated at the time of moksha or mukte enigmatic proposition number 7 let tapas become gnanamaya tapas is no doubt a serious business but the individual is likely to lose track of direction and can slide downwards thus earning demerit this is likely because in the course of tapas the practitioner will surely acquire extraordinary powers and will be tempted to use them for the wrong reasons man becomes egoistic selfish and irresponsible thus spoiling his own case the ultimate aim of sadhana should be set at the acquisition of gnana meaning true knowledge of self cosmos and god it is believed that knowledge comes with grace and siddhi comes from tapas siddhi means supernatural powers who is a warning to all of our sadhakas never to be aware of siddhi instead start to acquire knowledge knowledge is the light of the soul nahi gnanena sadrsham nothing is comparable to knowledge said gita bhagavad gita i mean there is another truism attached to knowledge accumulated past karmas are destroyed by the acquisition of knowledge through tapas japa leads one to tapa and therefore all should do japa in order to lessen and wipe off karma karma done in ignorance binds man to perpetual suffering including endless chain of lives on the other hand karma done with knowledge and enlightenment liberates the individual enigmatic proposition number 8 blend tapas with buddhi buddhi means intellectual power many of the sadhakas never rise above the mediocrity they do japa mechanically such persons are bound to suffer japa he is a powerful mean to bettering us in all aspects of life but one rarely realizes this buddhi is the special quality of atma sadhakas are commonly found to seek guidance from the gurus or our lord even over silly things yogi achita maintains that one should solve one's problems all by oneself with the help of one's own buddhi buddhi grants us viveka a firm sense of discrimination as to what is right and what is wrong that is viveka gives you a sense of judgment sri krishna and yogi achita both took high premium on buddhi we live in darkness and behave irrationally and therefore suffer after enlightenment and buddhi and viveka only then you truly become master of your destiny being meek and humble is not the right attitude being good to all is another falsity being good for what good persons without buddhi and viveka are likely to falter in life and therefore suffer in life it is believed by the majority that good people suffer more but surely suffering comes not because of his good qualities but because of lack of buddhi and viveka a good man will be an ignorant man and ignorance brings untold suffering and privation siddhartha became buddha after the acquisition of buddhi let us all become buddhas and get enlightened enigmatic proposition number 9 acquire brahmatva brahmatva is the highest position that each sadhaka should strive to acquire 
it comes of the self realization samadhi and self realization for us are only the beginning of our spiritual pilgrimage never the end the quest for god and the truth is eternal it is never reached there is merit and meaning in the striving in fact striving is the merit of sadhaka brahma means the great brahmatva means parama padavi the highest acquirable status a yogi stays always in brahmatva in such a person pranam and atman are found to lie in togetherness without suffering the pangs of separation in atma sachatkara the separation is likely why it is certain for true in brahmatva it is not so it is strange but true that in the domain of spiritual life it is pranam with a tremendous support to atman so that atman dug out its hidden power brahman means the pranam perpetually in close proximity of atman oh it is i mean the topic becoming heavy and therefore i stop here enigmatic proposition number 10 be in karma and do tapas by karma we mean one's station and duty the terms refer to the gross and subtle activity and both are absolutely necessary the rule is go from gross and graduate into the subtle the subtle is reached through the gross so it is unwise to renounce worldly activities for the sake of tapas or yoga sanyasa meaning renouncement of worldly affairs means dereliction of one's duties karma is apariharyam that is karma is unavoidable and mandatory no escape from it so wisdom lies in blending both beautifully and enjoy the blessings of both when done satisfactorily enigmatic proposition number 11 food influences food influences us tremendously we all live by food and we are what we eat yogi achyuta experimented with his dietary habits for as long as 9 and a half years he took more and then he took less with spice added and without spices yeah his experience is of high value a list of items of food cannot be given at random the dictum of the ancients is that the food must be proper that is yukta it is difficult to say what is proper food items our lord strongly recommends to some non vegetarian food including eggs in comparison a person addicted to non vegetarian diet tend to react violently and unpredictably one small experiment please take one vegetarian and one non vegetarian person and lock them up in a room for 24 hours it is highly educated to observe their behavior should i spell out the results well you better find it out proper food full of nutrients sufficient quantity and good quality is the food that ate japa fasting never recommended it is foolish to do sadhana with fasting or with insufficient quantity of good food we have seen our sadhakas who under false information avoid food while doing japa and suffer badly enigmatic proposition number 11 food influences us tremendously we all live by food and we are what we eat yogi achyuta experimented with his dietary habits for as long as 9 and 1/2 years he took more and then he took less with spice added and without spices yeah his experience is highly valuable a list of items of food cannot be given at random the dictum of the ancient sees that food must be proper that is yukta 
It is difficult to say what is proper food items. Our Lord strongly recommends Christian non-vegetarian food including eggs. In comparison, a person addicted to non-vegetarian diet tends to react violently and unpredictably. One small experiment please. Take one vegetarian and a non-vegetarian person and lock them up in a room for 24 hours. It is highly educated to observe their behavior. Should I spell out the results? Well, you better find it out. Proper food, full of nutrients, section quantity and good quality food aids japa. Fasting never is recommended. It is foolish to do sadhana with fasting or with insufficient quantity of good food. We have seen our sadhakas who under the false information avoid food while doing japa and suffer badly. What one does with our sadhana is pranayama and body must be strong, fit and healthy so that it is fit to carry the burden of sadhana. The food requirement changes with progress in japa. Later quantity is not needed and only a little may suffice, but external guidance might prove unhelpful. Be your own judge. But sweets, cold food, artificial beverages, fast foods, spicy foods will surely damage the system. They just are never recommended. It is unwise to eat to the dictates of the taste buds. And remember, each food item is a medicine. It influences the metabolism in certain ways. Food induces slumber and can provoke senses. Bad food produces bad people. There is a beauty of a statement that the more you eat, the more you eat, the less you eat, the less you eat. Body can be a scoundrel or a saint. Body, I mean, not the mind alone. Body has a logic of its own. You cross it, it crosses you. Therefore, you please beware and behave properly and with respect to your body also. Body requires grass food. Pranam requires subtle food. Manas needs rest and relaxation, but Atman needs no such things at all. In fact, it needs shanti, absolute peace. In peace and in peace, with peace and with peace, that is Atman for you. Enigmatic proposition number 12, yogic power shall not be misused. Japa and Tapa surely grant on the Siddhis. Siddhis mean vast repository of extraordinary power. One can do and undo things with the power of Siddhis. You curse a man and the man is immediately affected. Siddhis make man into a brute. Both Rama and Ravana did tapas and acquired Siddhis. Rama became great by his meritorious acts while Ravana misused his yogic powers and thus earned the epithet Adaman. Yogi Achita is emphatic that powers when acquired should be stored and used only when it is required, that too for the welfare of the world and welfare of the humanity. Miracles are possible but should not be done. By miracles you try to bamboozle the public and earn glory. Please excuse me, I want you to know a powerful statement made by our Lord Yogi Achita. Very rare one, for he is not given to talking. It is like this. Look here. No one should do miracles. Miracles go against the laws of nature. You interfere in the math of nature. Even when one has power, one should never tempted into exhibiting miracles. But a time may come when I may have to perform a miracle like a which none in the past has performed, nor anybody in the future will be able to repeat it. Well, well, what an astonishing statement indeed. I am curious to witness it, but are you?
Oh, the world might be nearing the time when the power of yoga can surely be witnessed. Lord, let thine time come and come soon. Amen. Enigmatic proposition number 13. Do not talk of God and do not neglect karma. Man talking of God appears to me very strange and very awkward. Why talk of God about whom no one knows even an iota? Most funny is the case of non-believers called Nastikas. Take their entire life and times to talk and think of God in order to deny Him and His glory. What a tragedy! If God does not exist, why cannot one shut up? Then how can anyone get an idea of something that does not exist at all? Yogi Achyuta is categorical that one should not talk of God and one should not neglect His duties. Any talk of God is unproductive and ungainly. Dirty people, dirty minds, and talk of God. Talk of God is highly objectionable and indecent. Where is the need to talk is the question. Instead, there is much to do with our duties and responsibility. Many agents of God have sprung up and have thriving business in godly hardware and software. Big industries have sprung up doing a terrific business. God is being traded. What a tragedy! This God-oriented industry involves billions of dollars and billions of people connected with it. Perhaps it is only the sincere who needlessly take about God. Instead, it is highly desirable and needed to concentrate on our duties and responsibilities. What do you say? Enigmatic proposition number 14. Come away from Maya. Mama Maya Duratya, said Sri Krishna. None can outlive my Maya. Pray, what is this Maya that much is talked about in Ev or in derision? This term is philosophy also in popular parlance has caused a great damage. Today it is used to mean something that is illusory, bad and dangerous. Is it so? To say so is ridiculous. Maya is not delusion or ignorance. It is in fact the power of God. Yogi Achyuta said it is a friend, guide, teacher to the sadhakas. It follows us as shadow and it is seen ever at the highest state of yoga. At most we can say, when you deviate from the path of righteousness, it is maya. That way it means ignorance. Jesus was haunted by maya and he termed it satan. Maybe it is a negative force. Without maya, then there cannot be godly force. It is, so to say, a counterbalancing force, neither positive nor negative. Imagine the situation when godly force begin to act positively, maya acquires a negative stance. It becomes positive when godly force becomes negative. When God is tit, then maya is tat. When God becomes tat, maya becomes tit. This is the truth. Our experience is, when you acquire awareness in yoga, Maya acts as an expert guide. Surely, let those be, let there be no doubt about this. Yogi Achyuta used to say that he keeps Maya behind him while others allow it to lead them. Lord is not just counterbalancing, but goes ahead singularly. Only a yogi can take such a stance, and Achyuta is a yogi. Enigmatic proposition number 15. Do not venerate the past. Lord used the term Bhuta for past. Bhuta also means ghost. The other meaning is the five elements of nature like earth, water, air, fire, and ether. The past can haunt us 
for good or bad. In the practice of yoga, the past lives come alive and we will be affected by the contents of past lives. Roles change, past wife might become my present daughter or sister or even the same wife. Husbands also change roles. What if one comes across a person who once upon the past, who was so and so? What if we began to develop attraction towards that person? The scenario can be so very, very scary. In conclusion, we say, man today stands separated from his own self. His personality split is total and complete. Human suffering is interpreted as it is the inalienable part of nature and living. But, sirs, it is not so. Man is not made just to suffer and die miserably as it is so today. There is Yoga Vidya made available to you. Yoga nish the split and reconstruct the split personality into its original whole. Let there be no scope for either fatalism or pessimism. If God has made man in his own image, how then can God intend to keep the man in sin and suffering? The, the very idea is repulsive. Man cannot be sinner since he is fashioned by God. Modern sciences cannot be expected to solve the problems of man in particular and world in general. Science can tackle physical reality and it is helpless when spiritual reality is concerned. Can any sane person deny the existence of the other world, the world of spirit? You do it and you expose your ignorance. Scientists should not scare and warn the free thinkers. Galileo, Newton and Einstein had the glimpse of the world other than their field of investigation. The sense of the world lies outside the world. Logic sets the rules of thought and thinking, but what is the logic of logic? I am happy to investigate the source of the sciences of logic than logic itself. About Sri Achyutasrama Hampi, the organization. One, Sri Achyutasrama was established on April 4, 1966 in a small town called Urvakonda, Anantapur district of Andhra Pradesh, India. It has acquired Andhra Pradesh government registration at Anandapur, bearing number 39 bar 1973. Later it got the Karnataka government registration also at Gangavati, bearing number 40 bar 82-83. All the sadhakas who are active with sadhana and pay annual fee regularly are the members of the ashrama. All of them constitute the members of the General Assembly. The administrative wing is managed by the General Assembly, Secretary Council and the Supreme Council. The General Assembly meets once in a year. The administration is being run by a President, a Vice President, Secretary General, treasurer and a set of maximum nine members. Collectively it is called the Security Council. The Security Council is elected by the Dun Assembly whose term is three years. The Asama has two wings, the spiritual and the administrative. The spiritual wing is controlled by the Pradhana Guru, who is nominated by Yogi Achyuta. The position is perpetual until an emergency arises and then Lord Achyuta shall nominate a new person. Thus, the post is not hereditary and not remunerative either. Any person with a high spiritual content 
कैन क्वालिफाई 